President Moon Jae-in of South Korea arrived in Washington today. And this evening, he began two days of meetings at the White House. At the top of the agenda is figuring out how to stop North Korea's nuclear program. Neither country currently has a proven strategy, but even if they can agree on a way forward, an even more daunting step may lie ahead. Direct negotiations with the North Koreans themselves. Ambassador Mitchell Reese learned just how hard that can be when he served as lead negotiator with Pyongyang during the Clinton administration. The key difference is the vast cultural gulf. The isolation is significant. What that means in terms of day-to-day -day negotiating is that you have to proceed through three different sets of traps. The first is you have to make sure that you share the same concept. Do they have the same concept of nuclear weapons as you do? What's the words that you use? Are the words similar? And that's where you then get down to the, the final level. They often ascribe different meanings to the same word. And so you go from concept to word to meaning. That takes an awfully long time. So you've got to prepare yourself to go forward in a very methodical way. You can't make assumptions that there's similar cultural touchstones or reference points. They're extremely sensitive about any references to their leadership. But often in these negotiations, there was a member of the security force watching what they said, watching how they behaved, and reporting back to the Capitol. They don't always have the flexibility or the freedom to say or act the way one would assume. So how would I sum up diplomatic history between the United States and the North Koreans? There were hopes, sometimes punctuated by limited success, that we could actually find a diplomatic pathway forward. Nothing in the past 50 years has really justified the continuation of that hope. We have to look towards other options, such as denying them the technology and the money that they need to build these programs, and making sure the deterrence remains strong because the North Koreans are committed to developing nuclear weapons to protect their regime. The current leader's grandfather started the program, his father accelerated it. It's inconceivable to me that there's any prize, any rewards that we could offer that would persuade him to abandon the course that the country has been on for more than half a century.